All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Andrzej Krzywda from RKNC and today I'm in the beautiful St. Petersburg, Russia. And I'm in the JetBrains office uh, sitting here with Artyom. Uh, so could you introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, uh, my name is Artyom uh, Sarkisov. I'm a product marketing manager for JetBrains RubyMine. Uh, I live in St. Petersburg and I'm a marketer by my background. Yeah, yeah. So we have just been, both of us were at the um, St. Petersburg Ruby conference. That's why we are here. And Artyom played the role of a host uh, yeah. at the conference. It was really well, a good job. Thank you. And, and the whole conference was actually in this venue, in JetBrains venue, uh, where you just moved to this venue, right? That's uh, uh, you made the office. Do right? the follow office, yeah. Yeah, that actually, uh, we moved here maybe six months ago, anyway, in the beginning of maybe eight months ago, mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning of uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and previously we worked uh, in a smaller office, mm -hmm. and now it's, it's much, it's, it's bigger, this one is bigger. It, uh, it is, um, it, it can have up to a thousand people now, wow. because JetBrains has become bigger and it's getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's for, from my perspective, this is amazing to hear, you know, that a company which produces uh, code editors, uh, you know, it's a thousand people. That's, oh, yeah. That's really huge. And people say that sometimes, <laughs> yes. But we have a lot of products actually, and our biggest ones are uh, the one for uh, Java, that's IntelliJ mm -hmm. idea. Also a huge one for PHP, PHP Storm, WebStorm for JavaScript, and actually for almost every popular mm -hmm. programming language. If if if. Uh, there is a programming language that is po popular and used in production. Mm -hmm. Most likely, we have a tool for that. Great. Like, uh, uh, so, just a disclaimer for those of you who are watching this and don't know me, I'm a big uh, fan of RubyMine, which is a JetBrains product. And I was using IntelliJ when I was a Java developer back in 2000. So, <laughs> that's where my story with JetBrains started. And then I switched to Ruby, and at the beginning, I was using like Vim, and a TextMate was the thing in, Ruby, in the mm -hmm, Ruby community mm -hmm. in the beginning. Uh, but once I, me and the, the RKNC company, once we started working on bigger Ruby projects, more of us switched to, to RubyMine. And mm. for me, it was like a great, great uh, feeling overall. Mm -hmm. So I had a period of time where I was like switching every year between Vim and between RubyMine. But now over the last few, few years, it's just almost exclusively RubyMine. And for, for bigger projects, I just find it much, much better than the simple editors. Yeah. Although I did try like Atom and Sublime, and I didn't try VS Code, uh, but still, whenever I ask people, okay, how do you do this in VS Code, it seems like um, RubyMine really has the advanced way of navigation through the code, which is very hard to yeah. repeat in the simpler editors. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Thank you for using RubyMine, of course. And uh, actually, I keep an eye on all this, uh, on all these editors um, when I can. Mm -hmm. And I tried myself, well, it's part of my job uh, to see uh, which uh, editor has what. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've tried Atom and I tried uh, Sublime and VS Code and all of, all of these uh, things mm -hmm. that are still popular. And I would say that uh, all Sublime, Atom and VS Code are quite popular right mm -hmm. now. And uh, RubyMine is, uh, I would say uh, that RubyMine is pretty popular as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we were at Ruby Kaigi about... Um, what was it like uh, two months ago, maybe? Mm -hmm. And they had had some booths, uh, some sponsors had this thing running. Which tool do you use? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was surprised uh, that I mean, I I, I know RubyMine is uh, popular enough, uh, but I didn't know we would have so much people. It's really nice to know that people pay for um, not only pay for the JetBrains product, but pay for our product uh, in a community that. Uh, considers uh, uh, that's really uh, uh, how do how do I put it in a community that prefers normally um, editors in a community where yeah. where there's yeah. an where there's this model like you don't need an IDE mm -hmm. and uh, and it's really cool it's 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 quite tough and it's hard to uh, develop a tool for such a community and make marketing things for such a community but. Somehow we manage, but RubyMine is old. It's I mean it's it's been around for ten years now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I can imagine the challenges. I know the Ruby community very well. I, I started living mm -hmm. in this community in two thousand four, 
Uh, so I was watching all the phases we went through, and there's definitely some uh, spirit of um, trying to be as open source as possible, or using free tools, relying on simple simple tools. Um, so I can I can imagine it's a difficult challenge for you to compete with. I don't even yeah. with Vim, right? It's free, yes. and so it's so cool. Vim is super popular uh, as well. Yeah, and, yeah, and so some some people are doing really awesome stuff just by using yeah. just with using Vim. So I can imagine this is not easy for you. On the other hand, uh, RubyMine, like from my perspective, has those advanced refactoring techniques. Obviously, we are in the context of a dynamic language, so you can never be really, really sure that everything works. But I think RubyMine is doing really good work with this uh, code analysis, with static code mm -hmm. analysis. And I know there's some runtime code analysis as well, so you are gathering some, some yes. data about the code. And you know this requires a uh, you know a team of people actually working on just RubyMine for uh, for a long period of time. So can you tell more about like what's how big is the team? Sure, uh, we currently have thirteen uh, people working for RubyMine at ChatBrains, uh, and about four or five working here in Saint Petersburg, mm -hmm. and others work in Munich and Moscow. Wow. Yeah, and the most of us are uh, Java developers because RubyMine uh, is based on IntelliJ idea, so mm -hmm. uh, we called a Ruby tool in Java. Yeah, that's the and <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the funny part because the Ruby community was all it started as the uh, kind of uh, I don't know opposition yes. to, to Java. <laughs> I think it, now it's matured, and in the Ruby community, I don't see the hate against mm -hmm. Java that much. But yeah, I mean, I that's <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting perspective. Okay. That's really interesting. Actually, Ruby mine started as a plugin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then yeah. it became a, a standalone product, mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah, with the team, with its own team. So uh, anyway, we also have a quality assurance on, on our team and um, a technical writer mm -hmm. because it's a complex tool and uh, yeah, there is enough, uh, there should be a lot of tutorials and docs mm -hmm. and uh, content is important. Content is king, they say, right? In, in marketing these days. Mm -hmm. And uh, and myself, I'm a product marketing manager, so I mostly, um, yeah, uh, try to uh, analyze the market, uh, get feedback uh, mm -hmm. from um, the customers, and um, see. I, I also do partly. I do product management, and uh, I, I mean, I uh, take all the requirements from the market and mm -hmm. try to um, convert it into convert it into uh, a product development plan. Mm -hmm. But of course, I do not do this alone. We have a team lead mm -hmm. who's both. Uh, not only he's leading. Uh, uh, the developers, okay, and uh, but he's also leading well the team all together, mm -hmm. and he's also coding. He's a coder, a Java, co a Java programmer uh, too. So he's like a, a coach, a playing coach in a way. So okay. and he does product management as well. And we also have a, of course, a technical support specialist. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's about the team, and um, yeah, RubyMine is. Really, of course, RubyMine, I consider RubyMine uh, a very advanced product, and it is, and it's probably, uh, in terms of the integrated development environment, I truly believe uh, that it's uh, the best because all, the, all, all of the things work out of the box. Uh, you mentioned code insight and code navigation. These are the most important features that we have the ability to go to the definition of mm -hmm. any yeah. Uh, yeah, entity, like a method or a class or whatever finding usages and that kind of stuff, that all works out of the box. The ability to go to any jam that you use in your product, uh, in your project, mm -hmm. in your application. That's really huge, that's really huge. And luckily, um, in my opinion, other uh, free tools are not there yet. And uh, as I said, I keep an eye on them and I tried uh, VS Code. Uh, they have uh, cool plugins like SolarGraph, some other plugins, they are free. Mm -hmm. This is amazing, this is great. And I'm an economist by my background. I've never seen any other sphere where people would share so much uh, for free. And okay. that's why uh, IT and especially Ruby community, uh, th this is amazing. Mm -hmm. This is economically uh, <laughs> incorrect, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. In terms of, I mean, of, classic, of classic economics, this is, this is crazy. On the other hand, yeah, I agree. This is crazy, and I have this also. I'm a programmer, but I also have this entrepreneur part of me. Mm -hmm. So I, I see your perspective that this is crazy, and I, I kind of agree. And if you look at some of the open source uh, projects, which I'm supporting, and we also develop open source projects, but mm -hmm. but it's really risky because at some point some of the leaders they they burn out, 
they get really disappointed that they are not paid. Mm -hmm. They're trying many different donations, actions, yeah. but they're never really happy. Um, and it's the, the whole um, business model, which doesn't exist, it's yeah. like very challenging for open source projects. So uh, I'm somewhere in between, like I really like uh, appreciate what JetBrains does with RubyMine, even though it's a paid product, but I really understand that if you have 13 people, for, or 14 people working here, yeah. it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's job, right? You have to be yes. paid and so on. So uh, yeah, and with open source projects, it's actually very hard to, um, to get the monetization around mm -hmm. it. Uh, as I can see, we are working on Rails Event Store. This is our open source tooling. I know that one. Uh, there are like, I estimate that there is like more than 100 production projects uh, somewhere using that. Cool. I've recently learned there's like a Romanian hospitals using Rails Event Store for collecting the data from oh, medical wow. devices. So that was a really cool thing. And uh, but because Rails Event Store is supported by RCNC and mm -hmm. people are paid to work on Rails Event Store, we can build a business model around it. So we are not expecting people to pay for Rails Event Store. We are just you know giving marketing through that. We get exposure. We get you know people know that right. know us. They see how careful we are with the with the code quality. So that's our way of bringing attention and then trying mm -hmm. to convert it maybe to our clients, maybe to. Uh, we are selling programming uh, ebooks for programmers or online classes for program for Ruby programmers, mm -hmm. so we kind of build the the business model around it. So it's still open source, but we can actually earn money on that. Yeah. But things like um, the code editors, they seem to be very often like lacking the monetization part. So mm -hmm. so this is really really interesting how it, how it works from the lacking of the business model perspective. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, yes, and. Uh yeah, the things you mentioned about the ebooks and and things that you can uh, do for free uh, in order to gain your audience and to get more expo exposure, mm -hmm. that's important. Uh, that's a very good practice, of course, in terms of uh, marketing. But it's uh, it's long term. Yeah, it's yeah, very long term. Definitely. Yeah, and uh, but it's really cool. It, it actually, when uh, I, I love companies and I love people who do that because uh, for me as a marketer, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe that's just because uh, I'm a marketer. Uh, that's why I think this way. But I think when I see someone doing something for free, I do understand that probably there's, there is a long-term um, uh, strategy. Mm -hmm. But uh, this also, uh, because of this, I understand that they have real plans. They're not planning to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. This is very important for me as a marketer because there, there's, uh, there, there is a ton of different products. They all call themselves amazing. Mm -hmm. They started yesterday and they call today, they call them themselves <laughs> amazing. Yeah. yeah, and because they have a lot of uh, investments and uh, IT is really, uh, has become huge uh, lately. And um, it, it bothers me a little bit. But when I see marketing strategies, uh, when people are doing something for free, I do understand that's, that's long term mm -hmm. and they're not planning to go anywhere. They're just trying to uh, develop. That's very important. Yeah, and they're, they're so the, using your perspective, the marketing perspective, that's the beginning of the funnel, right? Yes, it's, it's, yes it's, exactly. Uh, it's, so it's also great, uh, maybe we can go in this direction in this conversation, because mm -hmm. you know the Ruby community very well. Uh, you, know that, it more, yeah. you know it more from the, I don't know, numbers perspective, mm -hmm. some trends perspective probably. Sure. You're, you're not that technical, you're not coding, right? Uh, I do uh, I do code uh, just a little bit, for okay. instance, because yeah, uh, I also do release management for RubyMine and I write content. Uh, okay. For the yeah, we add new things, uh, major things, three times a year. We have three major releases, and uh, we add new features. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, we have an argument around that because I think we should spend more time uh, on uh, <laughs> fixing bugs. But hey, I'm a manager; that's that's always a problem. <laughs> and uh, but we still need some features to be supported, like Rails six, for instance, mm -hmm. or when there's a new version of Ruby, a new version of Rails, like the latest things, uh, like Action Mailbox, Action Text. You have to be. Uh, I have to be uh, inside these things uh, mm -hmm. technically yeah, sure. just a little bit. Sure. Just to understand how this works. So yeah, I, I I do know Rails a little bit and a little bit of Ruby, and I do code. For instance, recently I had to learn how to profile applications. Uh, I mean, I cannot do nothing better than a blog, mm -hmm. right? But but still, I have to learn how to profile applications because we have a feature, a profiler. Yeah, and, yeah, I, need, yeah. I need to try it more. Like I was, I was just experimenting with. Uh, uh, we we've had to improve performance of our applications in some parts. Oh. So, uh, so definitely something that. Uh, caught my interest that the profiling uh, part was got well, improved. 
I spent two days trying to understand what this is and how this works, <laughs> but now I have a somewhat decent blog post. It's uh, yeah, so I can sh share a link. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, just going back to this perspective, uh, because I, it's very unique, and I really want uh, mm -hmm. you to share more details, like. Uh, using your vocabulary from economical background, from marketing background, how would you describe the Ruby community you know, as a market? We don't like mm -hmm. probably to see this as a market, but, yeah. but it is a market, yes, right? Yes, it is. It is uh, I agree. So what are, you, what are your insights here? Okay, uh, so according to our um, estimations, uh, we have a resource department inside JetBrains, and we also use, uh, we do um, research ourselves, and we also use the external data from Stack mm -hmm. Overflow and uh, other open um, uh, sources uh, we would say that there is around three uh, by now we, we think there is around 300,000 of professional Ruby uh, slash Rails developers 300,000 mm -hmm. and um, according to our estimations altogether there is over a million um, programmers who use Ruby I feel proud of it. In a way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that, sure. that was kind of my estimates as well, but mm -hmm. very rough and probably without such a professional professional support that you've had. Yeah, we have some uh, data. <laughs> yeah, you have some data, uh, but that was like my rough estimates. Really good to confirm that. Thanks. Sure, no problem. And uh, yeah, as for the tools, uh, currently, currently, uh, the most popular ones are well according to our data. Again, uh, that's VS Code. It's become more popular uh, in a couple of years. So yeah. that's the n number one right now. You think? Uh, according to our some of our estimations, yes. Okay. Yes. I'm surprised to be honest. Yeah, it's become big, and uh, it's become mm -hmm. big in JavaScript too. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, according to our estimation, Ruby mine is quite huge. Uh, it's probably second or third place. Okay. Yeah, and. Really? Uh, and, but still, uh, Atom and Sublime are quite popular as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, another data that I have. Also, it's very important that in Japan, uh, for instance, uh, that's a very important market for us as well. Mm -hmm. And I also see that there is a gap uh, between the Japanese community, unfortunately, and, uh, for instance, the U.S. Ruby community. Okay. There is also a gap between the U.S. community and uh, the European one. Okay, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. a little bit, a little bit. Uh, different people, different, j just a little bit. They know each other, of course, mm -hmm. but it's like three different communities. That's the way I see it because uh, I travel a lot. I travel okay. to all these conferences, RailsConf, Ruby Kaigi, well, St. Peter RubyConf, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, didn't participate in Roslov, but my colleagues were there mm -hmm. twice yeah. and uh, this year too. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, it feels, now I feel like we have, we are inside this European community and the Japanese one is a little bit uh, outside. And why I tell you this is that um, once I, I, I do this research, um, this questionnaire sometimes when I go to the conferences and I work at the RubyMine booth, and according to my data, it was 2017, I think, I, I asked this question to all the uh, people who came uh, by uh, our booth, what tool do you use for Ruby and Rails development? And uh, th I think there were like uh, 60 or 80 people who um, answered mm -hmm. and two, the, two years ago, uh, fifty percent of them told me uh, they answered uh, that they used Vim. So it's like completely different data from what I got the same year at the U.S. Uh, conference at RailsConf at that mm. time two years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was um, Atom was number one. So okay. yeah, there was like uh, over a hundred people who told told me that. Okay. And it's it's different. It's different. It's interesting, and it's amazing. It shows uh, that uh, the market is not cannot be considered um, like um, in. Uh, you can't use just digits to yeah. analyze the market to make any conclusions about it because you have to be very more specific about the regions. Mm -hmm. uh, in Japan, they use one thing, the most popular one, and um, in uh, the U.S., it's a little bit different. Maybe because there are many startups, many That's companies. Super, yeah. super interesting. Yeah. yeah. In it. Europe, it's a third thing. There's okay. also Emacs. I know at least two people okay. using that. One of them is Bojidar, <laughs> right? And a uh, huge proponent. And th there's Avdi Grimm, who is very popular in the Ruby community, who is oh, also yes. Emacs user. So. Yeah. And uh, by the way, he also uh, uses RubyMine, as far as I know. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. He, yeah. We, we had some uh, communication about this mm -hmm. before, as far as I remember. Yeah. And uh, oh, by the way, it's also a thing. Many people use different coding tools for Ruby at the same time. 
So they say, when I have to fix something for real quick, I may use VS Code or I may use, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I may use Sublime. Sublime mm -hmm. is really, yeah, it is fast. It's super fast. Mm -hmm. uh, I use it sometimes as well. And uh, when, I when I have a huge project, a huge product, I use uh, VS Code because it has some smart functionality. They call it IntelliSense or something, I believe. Mm -hmm. And or, or they say uh, I use RubyMine when it's a new project and I have to understand what's going on, where mm -hmm. is what. And yeah, it's also a trend. It's also interesting. People may switch between uh, different tools at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I also like when I have a quick, really, really quick fix. Uh, I don't know, like Python or something. Mm -hmm. Then, and actually, I also for Ruby code, I open Vim. So I just mm -hmm. have this shortcut memory that okay, Vim, yeah, Vim's right, on the way. Like right. let's fix it quickly. But given, really given my job, I most often review existing big existing REST applications because that's what our clients come to Arc and see and they want us to take over or help them with uh, maintaining or extending existing Rails applications. Mm. So they are huge, I need to like, I need to be able to quickly evaluate what's the state of this project. So the whole navigation around with RubyMine is just mm -hmm. for me a lifesaver, like I can do it very, very quickly right now. And yeah, but I rarely start new Rails applications. So very often actually I do start them with just the terminal and Vim. So mm -hmm. I still have this part of me. Right. But then after a few days, it's usually switching to, to Ruby mine. Mm -hmm. I see, yeah. Also, I, what I notice is that some developers, uh, like I use, I really like the, the Ruby mine uh, Git integration. I use all the mm -hmm. UI for Git. I use on yeah. command K and the diff. Uh, yeah, the diff, this is really great. Yeah. And now, now we also have this partial, that was a new thing from few from a few months ago. Where you partial commits. Partial commits. Yep. This is really great. Yep. I, was, I use it all the time as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because so, you just do something, do something. Yeah. They understand you shouldn't commit it at, at once. There are two, three, five yeah. different, completely different things. Yeah. And you have to, yeah. It's so really that, that's, that's really useful in practice. So I like this UI. But I, I know some developers, I think at RKNC, even some people are using RubyMine for like for the main coding flow. Mm -hmm. But then when they do com git commit, they go to the terminal and oh, just yeah. git commit there. Yeah, we have yeah. the same thing. Recently at RailsConf, we did this thing, uh, usability testing. Mm -hmm. um, it was a new experience for us. Uh, we actually asked our, our um, uh, users to fix a test in RubyMine. Mm -hmm. And we uh, were recording this. And um, just to understand how people use RubyMine. And it was a new experience for us. It showed us uh, that most of the people, unfortunately, uh, use RubyMine uh, to edit files. And if we're lucky enough, they also use the navigation things because mm -hmm. they're clear. But when it comes to running something and when it comes to committing things um, uh, to Git or GitHub, then pushing it to GitHub, they actually use the terminal. Mm -hmm. Either uh, yeah, rather, yeah, the built-in mm -hmm. one or uh, uh, just a, a, a standalone application, and uh, this is important and this is um, critical for us uh, in a way because it because of this we understand that we are probably um, we have issues uh, with uh, the usability part mm -hmm. of things okay. and we have to fix that. But but we do that and it's really no it's really uh, amazing that we know this by now we know this in numbers how many people have this problem uh, because we can mm -hmm. because we can analyze it we can accept it and we can fix it mm -hmm. maybe not now not in the next release but uh, one step after another however it, what's also interesting by the way if i may to switch to this direction sure. just a little bit um, it's not the same uh, for some other Jefferson's products. So for instance, it's different for PyCharm, our IDE for Python, mm -hmm. because um, Django community uh, is considered uh, by me, I think, I consider Django community is somewhat, um, I mean, it's an MVC thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, and it's a web uh, a framework and um, people may use the same, uh, the same approach to programming, to web dev. Mm -hmm and probably somewhat the same for JavaScript uh, developers. Mm -hmm. But Python is bigger, it, they, it has data scientists, uh, it has, um, it, it's really huge for um, uh, education and other things. Same for Java, desktop applications. Mm -hmm. That's not only uh, web dev, mm -hmm. many different things going on. And they use our tools differently because they use different approaches. They, they program differently, they think a little bit differently. Okay. Because it's a little bit of a different sphere, it's not web dev. It's, not web, de web, web development, but desktop applications, or um, and, and and many 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 other things. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. They use so hence they use uh, JetBrains tools differently. Mm -hmm. 
So this is new for us as well. We now understand that Ruby mine should have probably a little bit different, uh, di should be designed a little bit different in terms of interface. This is new. Okay. This is a new way of thinking for us. We never thought about it before. But we have UX uh, specialists now, and we've worked closely to understand how we can fix this. Yeah, this and is also interesting. Like you, UX specialists in your company is like probably something totally different than UX specialists in so yeah. many companies. Like you, we are talking about user experience more like developer experience, mm -hmm. which is also another topic I wanted to uh, like ask you because like. Typically in the economy, we are splitting the companies into like B2C and B2B companies, mm -hmm. right? Uh, wh while I was working on Arkansas, I was just a developer, but then suddenly I become uh, also a salesperson, a marketing yeah. person. I learned a little bit about business. And I, I, I think I borrowed this term from somewhere, or maybe I invented this, the whole concept of business to developers. So B2D, just for, <laughs> for being very specific. Yeah. Uh, do you consider your company like kind of in this area? Uh, business to developers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's totally B2D. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, so you, need to be, yeah. you need to really understand developers, right? That's yes, that's top-notch priority. That's number one priority for us, mm -hmm. I think. I can't speak on behalf of whole, whole chat brains, but mm -hmm. the way I see this, I would say that first of all, between B2B and B2C, it's in a way it's both. It's closer to B2B in my opinion, okay. because uh, we make tools and developers use it to make their tools. So yeah. that's B2B in terms of uh, economics, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. But what do you, you say B2D, yeah, it's, it, I like it very much. I would say, yeah, to specify this and to narrow it down to something more specific, JetBrains and it, on the whole and RubyMine in particular is completely about B2D business mm -hmm. to developers because mm -hmm. this is our top priority for, I think for, yeah, completely for all of our products and uh, our programming language that we are trying to develop as well. I'm talking about Kotlin. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, completely true. Yeah, B two D is something mm -hmm. I would say JetBrains is about on the whole. So now, if you like move a bit uh, higher and wider, um, how do you see the overall developers community? Uh, what are your observations? How people switch between languages? What mm -hmm. are the trends? Mm -hmm. How often they switch languages? Like, is it something that people stay with for a long, long time, or like this? How do you see the whole thing with people using many different languages at the same time? Mm -hmm. Is it a big thing or is it just a small niche? Uh, I don't know much about uh, developers on the whole because mm -hmm. I'm more uh, about Ruby developers. Sure. Yeah. And um, well, as for Ruby developers, I uh, meet people all the time who use both Ruby and, well, Apparently JavaScript, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the elephant in the room. <laughs> I wouldn't say that I all, all only meet people who hate JavaScript, for instance. No, it's different. It's different. Uh, and it's good. And uh, so I would say uh, also I meet people who use um, so not only JavaScript apart from Ruby, but also um, Python. Uh, I even meet people who use both Java and Ruby, but that's probably, normally they are managers. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not sure that's why they say it, but maybe it's, you know, maybe that's because they used to use IntelliJ IDEA back then when they were developers, uh, and then they become managers and they uh, got licenses for them and for their team, for RubyMine, for mm -hmm. instance, or for IntelliJ IDEA. Well, the ultimate version also supports has the Ruby plugin. You can, of mm -hmm. course, uh, code in Ruby in IntelliJ ID as well. Um, and maybe because of their thinking, uh, they get these licenses and they go to the conferences together uh, with their um, together with their employees. And mm -hmm. yeah, and they come to my booth and mm -hmm. they say I both uh, code a little bit in Java and Ruby, and that's why I get this uh, mm -hmm. information. Like, wow, there are developers who code code both in Java and Ruby. Anyway, back to your question. Uh, so I would say the biggest things, uh, so the biggest pattern I see, there are some people who use only Ruby. Well, Ruby, mm -hmm. only Ruby normally is Ruby, Ruby on Rails, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, just to be specific. But I also meet a lot of people who use uh, Python and uh, JavaScript. And as for switching according to the data, I had this um, research, um, this questionnaire, I made it uh, and I sent it to some users who stopped using uh, RubyMine for some mm -hmm. uh, reason. And I asked them why. Why did you stop uh, using RubyMine? What, mm -hmm. what went wrong? 
because I wanted to win the back or at least to get the information. Was it mm -hmm. about the feature, uh, the lack of features? Was it about the lack of performance? What was about it? What, was, what went wrong? And 50% of them told, unfortunately, that they stopped uh, using RubyMine because they switched to a different language. Okay. But that, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call this a huge trend, but there is uh, a part of uh, developers who do switch from mm -hmm. uh, Ruby according to so our data. So we're talking about 50% of the people who responded to your survey who yes. stopped using, uh, stopped paying for RubyMine. Exactly, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's a small audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just to be exact, it's a small audience. I, I just yeah. want to keep the impression yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. there's nothing wrong. Ruby is fine. <laughs> Everything is amazing. <laughs> no, that there are some. Obviously, there are some trends, and you know, we are not really. We are no longer competing with Python, for example. Like in the whole, we are Python, not. Python is we are bigger not. now. Of, yeah. course, of course not. But there are too many directions in Python. It's it's natural. It's okay. We'll mm -hmm. see. We'll mm -hmm. see where it goes. Well, and Ruby three x three, right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see that soon, and uh, we'll see where it where it goes. Uh, Ruby mine is also waiting for that. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, mm -hmm. the gradual typing, uh, we're really up for that, all ears uh, in that direction. Anyways, Great. so, yeah, so there are trends of, some trends that we see that people move from Ruby to Python and JavaScript, yes, and they, some of them use all three things, yeah. And many Ruby programmers know that I will ask this question. That, do you see the trend of Ruby people switching to Elixir? Are you aware of oh, this trend? Oh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, not not switching to Elixir, no, okay. no, no, no. But uh, I guess because of the way Elixir looks like um, in terms of the syntax. Yeah, it's right? almost the same. Yeah, it's almost the same. And uh, part of our audience um, actually asked us to do something about Elixir. That's true. Okay. That's uh, public. We have this fuck tracker. It's utrack.jeprince.com, mm -hmm. and there is slash Ruby slash issues. So you can see all the current. Yeah, that, that's really nice of you, by the way, because I I, I, yeah. I watch this progress. So. Oh, you you yeah. did. Oh, yeah. That's cool. That's cool, and uh, that's very important for us. That's how we uh, process uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the the data from our users to understand what's going on. Yeah, it's, so it's very transparent. We use it every day. It's very transparent. Yes, yeah. it's completely public. And so I'm uh, downvoting all the Elixir ones, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I see. It. So, but there is um, a, a ticket. There is uh, that says, "Hey, do something with the Elixir support. Add support mm -hmm. for Elixir." And there is a third-party plugin um, developed uh, for uh, IntelliJ and RubyMine. Mm -hmm. um, so, it exists. Uh, you can install a plugin. I for think Elixir. I tried it when I was trying Elixir some time ago. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember talking about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay, so no official support yet. It's there on the tracker, but so the uh, just to, yeah yeah just to clarify this, uh, there there are currently no trends to add uh, official support for Elixir. Okay, and um, yeah, we we'll, but we are we, we keep an eye on it, and it's really easy to keep an eye because uh, if it's really necessary, people will come and use caps lock. Uh, in our chat, for mm -hmm. instance, or I mean, I keep an eye on it, and I I, I will know when it's mm -hmm. when it's time to do something about it. But unfortunately, we don't have any resources right now to do that as well. Mm. Yeah, that, that's the problem with Elixir. Like some people who know me, they I've recorded like controversial video like three years ago why why I'm oh. not switching to Elixir, mm -hmm. which was very controversial because that was a big trend like three years ago, two years ago, and uh, I really like Elixir for the technical kind of arguments uh, because it has much better way of concurrency built in, Erlang mm -hmm. is fa a fantastic virtual machine. Uh, I mean, the Erlang can live on a virtual machine, the whole idea of processes, I, I really like it. Um, but now, now the business perspective, mm -hmm. uh, the economy perspective, I just don't see Elixir as a viable market. That's something that I'm worried about. Mm -hmm. and, but I do see a trend that many smart Ruby programmers uh, either switched completely to Elixir or they like partially switched. So they do Ruby over day and Elixir in the night. <laughs> um, and this uh, bothers me a little bit. Obviously, it's their decision and, and, and it's fine. But it bothers me because what I see they are doing mostly is like they are re-implementing the missing Ruby libraries. Oh, I see. So their huge intelligence and their huge potential intellectual capabilities are used you know, by just porting okay. stuff. And obviously, they are doing their a lot of new stuff. And there are some interesting ideas that I'm also borrowing from the Elixir community. But I just, I'm just worried that, uh, you know, we are losing the human, human potential um, for Elixir, mm -hmm. and if it, if it's for a good cause that Elixir will suddenly become, I don't know, the 
language number five in the world or something that that's great. Mm -hmm. I'm just worried that this will not happen. Oh, I, I, see. I, see, I see that I see this then as a waste a little. You bit. don't see enough rationale. Yeah, I see. Like the the whole Ruby revolution when it started in 2004 with Rails, it was just much bigger reason to switch. I was one of the people switching from Java to Ruby, and I never really looked back. Mm -hmm. And Elixir, if Elixir started in 2004, that would be Elixir revolution. But mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's now the market is different. And if you look at from, from the market perspective, you always need to know which target you are actually like, who is your target and mm -hmm. where do you want to grab the market from? And Elixir definitely is targeting Ruby, even if they are not aware of this, they are doing this. Mm. Mm, but Ruby is like too small to be like a good source of the <laughs> land probably, to grow up. Probably, I don't know yes. how to call it. So. It's, it's yeah, just my opinion. I didn't mean to offend any Elixir developers who are watching this, but you know, it's, it's just... Yeah, I can second that. I mean, uh, that's that's the insight you get as, 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 as a technical person uh, in the beginning, right? In, in the input to mm -hmm. this black box called Elixir. And I, am as a marketing person, can tell you who knows the market data from the output uh, or from the market side. Uh, for now, there are not enough uh, production. Uh, I mean, there is not enough businesses that use Elixir mm -hmm. in production, and unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's just um, data that I get. So, uh, so yeah, I, this actually supports uh, mm -hmm. also your opinion. I think in a way that mm -hmm. it's not that huge, at least up yet. We'll mm -hmm. see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. Uh, all right. So maybe just for the last topic, we both. Well, you are the host. I attend. I was a speaker and an attendant yes. of the conference. Uh, so we've had two days of fantastic talks, and you know, great congrats to all the organization team Thank and, you. and uh, everyone who was involved and the, for the sponsors. Uh, it was a great conference, and I appreciate it also as a conference organizer. So I organized Wrocław RB, and I've, mm. I really um, it was one of the best experiences I've had in the la last years as, Thank a, con you. as a conference. That's so the venue, hear. the agenda was actually the talks were really advanced. That's what I'm. I usually worry because uh, I'm happy that Ruby community gets bigger and bigger and we need those talks for the junior people. Mm -hmm. But me as a senior developer, I don't you know, sometimes I just, I'm just not that mm -hmm. interested. So here was actually great. I, I really liked so, some of, many of the talks here and the level was really high. And we also had the Ruby contributor uh, talking about the Ruby future. Yes, and we, we see, we've, we've heard some really good information about the progress happening. They also put really, you know, a lot of work um, what, what's your opinion on the, about the conference? Like, what did you learn mm -hmm. from the conference? So first of all, uh, it was a very uh, good experience for me. Mm -hmm. Yes, to, I, I hosted this for the first time. And um, it, it's, the f it's the first conference we host. Uh, we, um, we host at JetBrains uh, in our new office. We were really, um, it was scary a little bit because mm -hmm. we didn't know how it, it, it will be, what it will mm -hmm. be like. And, but luckily everything went, went great, almost everything went great. We had plus one to what you said about the technical talks. I'm not a, that technical, I'm, I'm not an advanced mm -hmm. uh, Ruby developer, not a Ruby developer at all. But yeah, it was part of the plan actually. Many thanks to Ivan Shamatov, the main yeah. organizer. Yeah. Yes, and a great uh, job. yeah, in, in, it started, I think, the whole thing started uh, way back, like three years ago maybe, when the SAP Ruby uh, community mm -hmm. started to be, get bigger, thanks to Ivan again. And we started hosting small uh, meetups at JetBrains um, for Ruby, uh, for the Ruby community, um, back in the smaller office. And now it's become, it, it has become bigger and bigger, and uh, now we had three, it, it, it went international, and yeah, we had people from, well, Poland uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the USA, yes, uh, Japan, and great speakers, uh, very, very well known in terms of, uh, very well known in the Ruby community, and great talks, very technical, people loved it, they actually told me that, so that's how I know it, they, they told me, mm -hmm. yes, they were very technical for advanced people, that's mm -hmm. very important. Um, and um, in terms of the organization, many thanks to my great colleagues uh, who made these technical things uh, work. Mm -hmm. I would, there is no chance I would do that without uh, the support of my colleagues. Uh, it, it, it was yeah. amazing for me to, to learn that it was actually the first conference in this venue. Oh, yeah. And you know, there was like everything was working. And as a speaker, I always have this stressful situation where, oh, I cannot plug in my, my, my laptop or yeah. some, there's something wrong with the sound. 
and you know, then you're doing your talk and suddenly things stop working. And here I didn't notice like any, any problem. Well, thank you. Yeah, that was important for us. We had this problem before. Uh, last year there was mm -hmm. the uh, Ruby conference and we had all set of these problems, yeah. unfortunately, yes. But uh, yeah, but we, um, we worked on our mistakes, I, mm -hmm. <laughs> luckily, yes. Uh, so great experience, yeah. And you also had a great talk. Thank you very much. Thank you for the DDD, yeah. And um, so, what else? What else to say? Uh, videos will be available. So great. So actually, the streaming is already available. It was oh, yes. that was something new. It's not very yeah. often that you can watch the conference live uh, uh -huh. uh, when it's happening. So for me, it was like another boost when because I'm as a speaker, I know that I'm watched not only by the how many people were there in the audience. Uh, 326 people. Okay, that was huge. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not only them, it's also people somewhere there online. And actually my wife, yeah. my, my wife was watching this, so oh. <laughs> that was really nice. Yeah. Great. Yeah, we didn't promote it well enough, I think. Maybe we did, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, yes, it was screencasted. Luckily, uh, we have enough technical uh, equipment to do that mm -hmm. right inside uh, the room, this new, uh, my hall, in the hall. Mm -hmm. So that's why we did it, uh, yeah. And it, it was amazing. I just, for now, I do not understand this. I, I'm still a little bit uh, uh, fuzzy, I guess. St still don't understand how, when, what I do. I cannot ad analyze it. Just uh, ended yesterday and I'm still... Yeah, it's very fresh yeah, now. It's too fresh <laughs> for me, yeah. I cannot analyze yeah. it. Put it what what I also list. liked was, uh, because it was in a way very similar to the conference I'm organizing. So I, I, mm -hmm. I enjoyed it being similar, like the technical oh. level. Oh. But also the agenda was organized that there was like one, uh, half an hour more or less for the talk, mm -hmm. some, some minutes for questions. And there was like, after every talk we could uh, have a, at least 15 minute break usually. Yeah. And, and there was a really nice hall with snacks, with food, with uh, drinks, coffee and so on. So it was great. And th this gave me as a speaker as well, some opportunity to talk, like to be available to other people to talk mm -hmm. to me. Um, there was enough space to people, I don't know, showing me their code on the table. Actually, I've had three different groups of people showing me some code, all of them using JetBrains, uh, sorry, RubyMine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> because they were, they were like, actually they were showing me some big code bases and they were, ah. they, they, so people know me that I'm um, trying to promote domain-driven design, even sourcing and CQRS mm -hmm. in Rails world, which is very unique and mm -hmm, it's not mm -hmm, very popular. Mm -hmm. So they were like, okay, can you look at it, this? Did we do it well or not? Mm -hmm. or I was helping someone to fix some, some smaller issues. So actually this made me think, and probably this is my like last topic for now, uh, but this is it's related to the conferences, like the role of sponsors and booths at the conferences. Mm -hmm. As an organizer, I have to admit, I was always against having uh -huh. booths at conferences because it's always about recruitment and I didn't like yeah. this part, but obviously that's needed. Uh, but at this, conferences, at this conference, I realized that I want to have an RTC booth somewhere at uh -huh. the conference because that's more explicit way of saying to the participants, hey, co come to us. We are not recruiting really, but we, I can help you decide whether DDD or CQRS mm -hmm. is a good fit for your application. Uh -huh. So maybe I can do some exactly. free, free uh, consultations, for example, that would mm -hmm. be useful for the people. So it's actually the first conference where I realized that it might be, you know, very, very useful. Oh, yeah. And how do you see this? Because you are often the, the person behind the yep. booth. Now you are the organizer as yep. well. So how do you see this aspect? Uh, probably I'm a little bit biased okay. because I'm a marketing person. Sure. And uh, sponsors, be, being a sponsor, uh, uh, sponsoring events as a JetBrains employee is very important for me because mm -hmm. it allows me to uh, show the live demo and show mm -hmm. all the uh, complex uh, things that we have in RubyMine and it's very important and you mentioned uh, this allows people to understand, that's very important, this allows people to understand whether they need and they, they need this product, yeah. this yeah. approach or yeah. whatever yeah. or not. This is, this is the priority for me so it's not like marketing uh, FMCG is about buy this thing, buy this bottle of Coke, buy this or that, smoke, don't smoke, mm -hmm. uh, whatever. Uh, in IT, this doesn't work, luckily. In B2B, it's different. In B2D, it's completely different. And you should be um, translating uh, the information so that people understand what this is about, because there's too much information. You have to show people 
what this is, and then they can decide for themselves whether they need it or not. So that's why uh, being present at booths is very important for me. So we do not do, by the way, that much of hiring at the booth. But mm -hmm. yeah, many companies do. Many mm -hmm. companies do. That's the most um, popular thing mm -hmm. of doing that. Of sponsor sponsorships, people yeah hire at mm -hmm. the booths. And we're promoting our product, which is basically yeah promotion as well. <clears throat> but that's one that's very important. And as uh, so because of this, because this is very important. As an organizer, I didn't have any. Um, as a co-organizer, uh, I didn't have. Um, anything uh, uh, I, I'm really not against uh, uh, having mm -hmm. any sponsors that's very important I would say the most important thing is that two, two things well uh, the sponsors we had that was uh, apart from Jeffrey's that was um, Cookpad, Toptal, Top Top mm -hmm. Evron it's also mm -hmm. huge in, in, in Russia and CIS and um, um, uh, uh, other sponsors as well they are actually part of the ecosystem Mm -hmm. And uh, Cookpad is actually part of the Ruby ecosystem in a way. They mm -hmm. have people from uh, the Ruby core. Mm -hmm. So I consider yeah, yeah. them all inside. So yeah, they spend money. They, they do promote their goods uh, at the conferences, but they also, it's not like they're mm -hmm. apart. They are inside the community and they support, they really do. Uh, they invest in these conferences so that people get bigger. Many people uh, from this, com I mean, uh, not from Cookpad, but, uh, People from Top Toptel that work for Toptel were also at the conference, and many other businesses send their people to this conference so that they can listen and become better developers. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Mm -hmm. That's also part of thanks to our sponsors. So I'm really uh, for this. Okay. I'm never against this. What I'm against, uh, uh, what I, I I'm really against um, doing pushing things in a stupid way. That's. Mm -hmm. That's bad marketing. I used to do it, it before JetBrains in other companies. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So, um, I yes. think developers are like very, very much against pushing any yeah. kind of marketing or yeah. sales. Like even sending an email sometimes is like too much, yes. too much for yeah. pushing for, for for many of us. That's true. You mm -hmm. have to be very, uh, yeah. What's the word? I don't know. It's it's this this way. This communication you can break it. It's fragile. So uh, you have to be very. Um, serious about the communication you're trying mm -hmm. to to do the way you do it don't mm -hmm. don't push it but uh, as for the rest it's totally fine sponsors speeches uh, are also fine for me because it's it's not about the sponsor pitch it's about the message you can mm -hmm. uh, get so as for the uh, as for the uh, sponsors I'm really for this yeah the sponsor talks I, I also was also always against those mm -hmm. but here when I looked at Bojidar making fun of this, yeah yeah you know, yeah that's one way to do and it miles you know yes showing like they say saying okay I know I'm I didn't want to bore you and so on yeah, so yeah. I was like very very aware of the situation <laughs> yes they're very experienced people mm -hmm. and yeah. they, they 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 know they're also they developers know. yeah <laughs> they, they know so that's, that's the point yes all right, Artyom, uh, thanks. That was a great Thank conversation. You very much. conversation. Um, I hope uh, you know, our uh, uh, listeners and watchers will, will appreciate it. So thanks for your Hopefully. time. Yeah, Thank and you. Good luck with RubyMine. I'm a big fan. Thank you very much. Good luck with Arkansas and DDD and event sourcing and the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>